Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today, I'm going to be baking a cake. It's called an ice water cake and it uses ice water, which I find a very interesting ingredient. Now, from what I've researched, this recipe is an old one. It goes back at least a hundred years. It can be found in lots of cookbooks. And the one that I'm going to be using today comes from this book called the Mennonite Community Cookbook. This book is incredible. It's filled with all kinds of recipes from people's personal kitchens and they have their names at the end of each recipe, where they came from. Mrs. Williams Jennings from Knoxville, Tennessee, or Mrs. E. M. Glick from Parksburg, Pennsylvania. All the recipes have been tested and this book was gifted to me from Sarah. Sarah, thank you so much for sending this to me. All the recipes I've tried in it have been fantastic, tried and true. The recipe I'm going to be making is this one right at the bottom there for ice water cake. Author of this recipe is Mrs. S.J. Boucher from Harmon, West Virginia. So along with the cake, I'm going to be making a seven minute frosting. And here it is right here. And this comes from Jenny A.L. Gable from York, Pennsylvania and Mrs. Lewis Armstutz from Apple Creek, Ohio. I've heard of this recipe a lot. It's a very popular one because it comes together in seven minutes and it uses granulated sugar. I find oftentimes I don't have powdered sugar, confectioner sugar around for whatever reason. So it's nice to have a recipe that actually uses regular old granulated sugar. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. To start this recipe off, I've got my oven preheating behind me at 350 degrees and I've already beaten up four egg whites, two stiff peaks. Stiff peaks means if you turn the bowl over, over your head, they will not come out. So we're gonna need those. Now the reason why I did the egg whites first is that we also need to cream our shortening here. And if there's any residual shortening on my beater blades when I try to beat my egg whites, then the egg whites will not fluff up. So that's why I did those first. All right, I've got my shortening here and I'm gonna add two cups of sugar. Three and a half cups of cake flour that I've already sifted. Add some salt and some baking powder. Quite a bit, three teaspoons. We're gonna sift that again. Cup and a half of ice water. And measure with a meniscus, right? When you look at the surface of the water, that little like dip in the surface level, that should be at the line. I'm not a huge fan of almonds in my cake, so I'm just gonna use the full amount of vanilla plus an extra little splash to make up for the almond, yeah? Add that to my ice water. And we're going to alternate between adding the flour and the ice water. Flour. All right, and water. Vanilla ice water. <laughs> Mixer is really great for beating egg whites. It's very fast, but it's a little bit too much, I find, when making cake batters. I just got it all over my face, and it's just a little bit much. So I'm gonna use my little bread whisk here, or the Danish whisk, to do the rest of the mixing. Okay, so this makes quite a bit of cake batter. We are going to make a double layer cake. Lastly, we're gonna add the egg whites and I'm going to do this in a couple batches. Typically, you add just a portion of it and <laughs> loosen the batter up a little. Kind of do it vigorously. You don't worry too much about deflating the egg whites because we're only adding a portion of them and then it's not as heavy. So that should make adding the rest of the egg whites easier. Now we add the rest. Gently fold them in if you can. Now I've got two eight inch cake pans and we're going to divide the batter between these two. I've lined them with parchment and sprayed them with baking spray. I added parchment because I find that it gives you extra amount of insurance to make sure that your cake comes out, but liberally buttering and flouring is typical, but do as you wish. Using a measuring cup is kind of a easy way to divide batter between two pans kind of get even layers. 
So next we're going to pop these into a preheated 350 degree oven and bake them for 30 minutes or until a toothpick pierced in the center comes out clean. Then we're going to let them cool on a rack for 10-15 minutes before turning them out and letting them cool completely before we ice them. You never want to ice a hot cake because mm, happens. So must let them cool. Alrighty, I'll see you once the cakes have been baked. Alrighty, my lovelies, I am back. We are going to make the icing now. The cakes are cooling and this icing is quite interesting because it requires cooking over a double boiler. That sounds fancy. All that is is a heat proof dish and cooking over boiling water. You want to make sure that your vessel that you have can accommodate the bowl that you're going to be mixing in and you don't want the boiling water to touch the bottom of the bowl. So got the water heating and in this glass bowl I've got two egg whites. Into that we are going to combine a bunch of sugar. One half cups, some cold water, some cream of tartar, a pinch of salt, some corn syrup, nope. Nope. and some vanilla. I don't usually measure my vanilla, but I'm thinking the vanilla might help get the rest of that corn syrup out of there. Okay, we're going to give this an initial mix just to get the sugar to combine with the egg whites. And then we're going to place it on top of the boiling water and beat it for about seven minutes until it starts to thicken. That will cook the egg whites gently and then it'll start whipping some air into it, which will create our frosting. And look how thick this has gotten. It is incredible. Look, it's like marshmallow fluff. It is so beautiful, thick and gorgeous. And I need to get it to 161 degrees to make sure that our egg whites are cooked. And indeed we are at 166, so we are good. Look how glossy that is. It's gorgeous, looks like a meringue. So now we're going to beat it without the heat for another minute or so. Now, I know I was complaining about this mixer earlier for being so loud and for being too choochy and powerful, but for beating egg whites, this thing does a great job. And for beating this particular frosting, phenomenal. Look how glossy. Wow. Ooh, it's so shiny. Oh my gosh, and look at those peaks. That is incredible. It's like so beautiful. Wow. Wow, look, it's like meringue kisses. Impressive. Okay, that's why everyone was talking about the seven minute frosting because look, it's beautiful. Hi lovelies, I'm sitting here with my chicken in the garden and I'm so happy to announce that my ebook, Emmy May's Guide to Gardening is here. So many of you have requested it. I will share all my tips and tricks on how to grow a garden, whether you have a tiny space or some land. And I cannot wait to help you get started on your gardening journey. <laughs> all right, we have our cooled cakes. And even with my careful measuring, what I thought was careful measuring, one of my cakes is slightly thicker than the other. But we try, we try our best. So I think I'm going to go to the lengths of evening this cake out. Certainly don't need to, you don't want to, but I'm going to because I would like it to be nice and flat. So take my bread knife and keep it parallel and just take off that little top hump. I think this is gonna be my top layer. Let's do the same with the other. And I'm going to place this face down like that. Nice. I have some squares of parchment and I like to tuck them around and underneath the cakes so that as I'm frosting, the parchment pieces will catch the excess frosting and then we can take them out and then our cake stand will still be nice and tidy. From what I've read, this seven minute frosting comes together in seven minutes, but it's important to use it right away because it does begin to set. Look at that. It is so gorgeous. It sits up so tall. I <gasps> love it. And we're gonna schmunch this around. Oh boy, yep, yep, yep. Looks great. 
the other cake, turn it upside down, and place it right on top. Oh, yes! That is beautiful already! Look! Gorgeous! Ah, these old-fashioned recipes. Love! Love so much! And now, we're just going to cover it with more of this delectable frosting we made. Look at just heaped on top like that. It's like whipped cream. Let me know in the comments below if you've made seven minute frosting before and your tips and tricks. Cover up any gaps. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful this cake is. And then I'm gonna give it some little old fashioned swoops. Some swoops here with my spatula. Oh my gosh, this cake is so lovely. I think what I love is that it's working as it says in the recipe and the results are so lovely. I mean, what more could you ask for from a recipe? You want it to work and you want it to look good, but we haven't tasted it yet, but it's coming. I mean, vanilla cake, I mean, how could it not be good? Lovely, this cake is so beautiful. Look at it in all its shiny glory. It is so beautiful. I'm so pleased with how this turned out and how easy it was to make. I mean, look at that. Look how glossy that is. Oh, effortless, absolutely effortless. No creme coats, no fondant, no nothing. Just whip it up, put it on, it sticks. There's didn't slide off the cake at all. Super easy to make. Didn't have to freeze the cake, just let it cool off. So here we go, sharp knife. Plunge it in. Oops. Mm -hmm. Got a little taste test of it right there. Ready for this? Slide it out. Beautiful, look at that. Beautiful cake. Beautiful. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. All right, I use my finger to slide it on there. Look at the inside of that. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The frosting is very, very sweet, but has a really fluffy, airy, whipped meringue texture to it. Mmm. Very different than a buttercream frosting. Not at all heavy. Very light. I mean, look at that. All right, let's give this a taste. Cake time. There is the crumb. Here we go. It's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The cake is delicious. Vanilla, fluffy, rich, sweet, moist. But the frosting is really what I find interesting. It has such a delightful, light, fluffy texture. It's similar to whipped cream, but it has more substance to it. And it has more stability to the foaminess of this frosting as opposed to whipped cream, which I feel kind of has a little bit of a kind of an oiliness, like a slicking kind of in your mouth, although it has a wonderful flavor. Love the flavor of whipped cream. It doesn't have the strength also to kind of support a cake. Well, this one, yes, it feels stable enough. The foam seems rigid enough in its lightness to support two layers of cake. Mm-hmm. Delicious. This cake is definitely celebration worthy, but it doesn't require all the kind of finicky fuss of some other cakes. About two hours solid, you can get yourself a cake from beginning to end. And that's pretty impressive in my book. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media. Check out my website. I'll include a printable version of this recipe. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.